Hey, what is up, Frag fam? Corbin here again from Northwest Scent. So today we are gonna be talking about 10 different fragrances that absolutely blew me away when I first tried them. So a couple of these were blind buys that I got really lucky with, and I just like, you know, I was head over heels for the fragrance, and I've loved it ever since. Most of these, however, were ones that I either sampled first through like a decant or something, or I was at a department store and I actually tried the fragrance. Either way, all of these, I absolutely love them. And the ones that I tried, I basically had to get a bottle immediately after trying them because they were that good. So if you guys want to find out what these 10 different fragrances are, then please stick around. But first, let's roll that intro. All right, guys, welcome back from the intro. And like I said, this is gonna be my top 10 fragrances from my collection that absolutely blew me away when I first tried them. Let's dive into the list here at the number 10 spot. Okay, so starting the video off here at the number 10 spot, and there's gonna be no rank to this list, although I will say this is the one that I've owned the longest. This was actually one of the first fragrances that I ever picked up on my fragrance journey. So this is coming from the house of Dolce & Gabbana, and this is the one Eau de Toilette. Wow, this stuff really still does amaze me. I don't ever talk about it, you know, even the Eau de Parfum version, which I prefer that one to this now. I don't really talk about either of them, and that's just because everybody knows about these fragrances, and really at this point, they're not super unique. But back, you know, a few years ago when I did try this one for the first time, absolutely blew me away. And again, there was nothing at the time that smelled like this, at least that I had ever tried. I was mostly used to Aqua de Gio and um, you know, just fragrances like that for the most part. Now this one, it's known for ginger, there's amber in here and then tobacco, and there's actually grapefruit as well. So it is actually a little bit fresh from the top, although the grapefruit does dissipate pretty quickly. And again, it turns into kind of a fresh, spicy, ambery, but kind of like sweet cherry tobacco fragrance at the same time, really, really seductive. Again, the performance, is pretty subpar on this one, but I just absolutely love the scent alone. This thing really kind of kicked off my journey. So you could probably thank this fragrance partially for why I am here on YouTube. So again, here at the number 10 spot, but again, no rank to this list. This is coming from the house of Dolce & Gabbana, and that was the one Eau de Toilette. Okay, so up next here at the number nine spot, this is definitely like the most recent purchase of mine here on this list. I've only had it a few months. For the most part, I wanted to stick to fragrances that I was very familiar with and that I had had for a long time. Again, this is my most recent pickup here, however. This is coming from the house of Guerlain. This is Lome Ideal L'Intense, which I do have a new bottle because they used to come in the full out matte black bottles. This one is completely clear. It still smells the same, however, and it smells fantastic. This is absolutely my favorite flanker within this line. I've not tried all of them, but I've tried, I would say, over half of them. This one focuses around almond, just like the entire line. It is very creamy here, although not quite as much so as in some of the other ones. You also get a very prominent chili pepper note in here. There's leather and then some rose as well. So this is a really nice masculine rose. It works really nicely, again, with the spicy notes in here, the creamy almond, that leather. It is very seductive sweet, creamy, but again, very masculine, I would say at the same time. There's actually a bunch of sweet spices in here as well, like cardamom, and then you get a little tonka bean. So this thing smells absolutely fantastic. Like I said, this is absolutely my favorite fragrance within this line. And when I first tried this one, I instantly needed a bottle, and I think I ended up ordering one the same night. So really, really good stuff. If you guys have not tried this one, definitely check it out. Again, I think this is probably one of the better ones in the line. It's definitely my personal favorite. I think you guys will really enjoy this one as well. And again, from the house of Guerlain, that was Lome Ideal Lynn Tense. Okay, so up next here at the number eight spot, this is definitely one of the most complex fragrances out there that I've tried. And this was actually one of the first niche fragrances that I ever got. I think this was my first pickup from this particular house. And this is coming from the house of Amouage. And this is Jubilation 25, which you guys probably know about this one. Wow, I am still amazed by this fragrance. Like I said, this was my first fragrance that I actually tried from them. And I actually uh, tried this pretty early on in my fragrance journey, which I know some people find this one a little bit hard to wear and challenging. I absolutely loved it when I first tried it, which kind of does amaze me nowadays because there's definitely stuff that had to grow on me. This one from the beginning smelled fantastic. You get a lot of blackberry in here. There's honey, you get some incense, myrrh, and then oud. So this is an oud fragrance, although it's working really, really nicely. This definitely does kind of have a Middle Eastern theme to it, but it's a very wearable fragrance at that. You know, it fits in that genre, but 
Again, the blackberry and the honey come across very fruity and sweet. They work really well with the incense, the resins, and then of course that oud. It's a very dark, woody oud, a little bit brooding, not overly skanky. The incense here is a very tame but smoky kind of quality incense. And then, you know, like I said, you get those sweet fruity notes and the honey. It just really works all well all together. This is a fantastic fragrance. You need to check this one out from the house if you have either not tried it in general or if you've not tried any fragrances from this house because this is definitely one of Amouage's best. So again, from the House of Amouage, that was Jubilation 25. Okay, so up next here at the number seven spot, we have one of my favorite citrus aromatic fragrances out there. This stuff is so classy, but so appealing. And for a fresh fragrance, this stuff is really beast mode as well. So this is coming from the House of Christian Dior. And this is Eau Sauvage Parfum, which... This, this stuff is amazing. I have the 2017 formulation here. Have not smelled the 2012, although I do have a bottle on the way, so I really am excited to try that one. I probably already have it by the time this video is out. Anyway, this focuses around citron, which is a synthetic citrusy note. Um, I think it's kind of lemon-like. There's actually bergamot in here as well. You do get lavender, vetiver, and then elemy. And that's the entire note breakdown. It's not overly complex, but it smells extremely natural. Again, outside that citron, the ingredients here are very realistic smelling. The lavender, while it's not really jumping out at you and it's not like super powdery and soapy, I think it brings a very mellow aromatic vibe to this fragrance. And the Haitian vetiver here works really nicely. Usually to my nose, Haitian vetiver does come across maybe a little bit kind of dirty, earthy in a way. Here it is nice and grassy and woody. There's nothing like dirty with this fragrance. And actually the Elemi is the big star of the show here. It is kind of a sweet balsamic, lightly licorice resin and you can definitely get that here there is a licorice nuance to this because it is quite sweet you're definitely getting some of that sweetness i would say from the citron as well but in general it's mostly kind of that like resinous sweet quality that does give you kind of that licorice vibe working with that woody vetiver and those beautiful citruses and that very faint aromatic touch from the lavender at the top this stuff is fantastic very dressed up smelling i remember trying this i think it was a little over a year ago it absolutely blew me away again not just with the scent but with how beast mode this stuff is this thing lasts like 12 plus hours for a fresh fragrance that is amazing if you guys are into stuff that smells a little bit sophisticated not a barbershop fragrance this is not a barbershop fragrance but kind of in that same realm again a citrus aromatic definitely check this one out from the house of dior and again from the house of dior this was eau sauvage parfum in the 2017 formulation Okay, so up next here at the number six spot, we are almost halfway through the video. This is one of my favorite cardamom fragrances. It's also one of my favorite leather fragrances. So this is coming from the house of Memo Paris, and this is African leather, which you guys are probably familiar with. Man, this thing is so good. There's a reason that this gets a lot of talk here in the community. This is fantastic and extremely unique. And like I said, this focuses around cardamom and leather. It is a very sweet, spicy cardamom. There's not much freshness to it. The leather here is a little bit of kind of a skanky leather, not really animalic, but it's not like a suede note. You know, there's a little bit of kind of a rough and tumble feel to this leather. There's actually saffron and cumin in here as well, giving you a very spicy kind of Eastern feel to the fragrance. You do get vetiver. There's actually some oud in here as well. While not an overly oudy fragrance, it does bring a very dark woodiness, kind of like a heavy woody note in a way, but again, not really dirty. Again, this focuses around the leather and the spicy components. This thing is a style of fragrance that is a little bit dirty, but very seductive at the same time. So if you guys were ever curious about something like that, something that brings a little bit of a challenge to a fragrance, but has this alluring nature to it as well, you need to check this one out from Memo Paris. Again, this is one of my favorites to do that. And again, from the house of Memo Paris, this was African leather. Okay, so up next here at the number five spot, we have one of the best masculine vanilla fragrances out there. If you're a guy, you like vanilla, but you don't wanna wear something that smells like ultra feminine or maybe even unisex, you're looking for something that does lean masculine, definitely check this one out. As far as this goes, like this was an amazing fragrance. I actually tried this in a sample kit I got from Sephora and I did get a free bottle with that sample kit. This was like hands down the fragrance I had to get from that. So this is coming from the house of Armani and this is Code Absolute which you guys definitely know. Again, you know, this is not a list of unknown fragrances. These are just ones that absolutely blew me away when I first tried it. This one is no exception. I, again, remember getting this thing in that sample kit and this absolutely stood out to me as the best fragrance from there. This is a, again, a vanilla fragrance for men. You also get some citruses in here. There is nutmeg and then a little bit of tonka bean, or I should say a lot of tonka bean. This line in general is known for the tonka bean. So this comes across kind of like root beer. If you guys are familiar with like those soda-like fragrances, you know, things like Raja Parfum's Enigma, I think Paco Rabanne's Pure Excess Night. This one, of course, 
you know, they all kind of give you this fizzy soda quality. Again, this one kind of comes across like root beer. Of course, there is more to it than that, but kind of in a Cliff Notes version, that's what you get from it. It smells absolutely fantastic. Again, this is a masculine vanilla fragrance. So if you're looking for something like that, definitely check this one out from the House of Armani. And again, from the House of Armani, this was code absolute. Okay, so up next here at the number four spot, we have a vetiver fragrance that absolutely just amazed me. I was not a fan of vetiver at the time. This was the fragrance that changed that for me. It actually made me realize that, hey, I can enjoy vetiver and I can enjoy it a lot. So this is coming from the house of Nishane and this is Sultan Vetiver, which I've talked about before. Man, this stuff is fantastic. It is, again, just like any Nishani fragrance, this stuff is beast mode. It is kind of fresh at the same time though, and it's very unique smelling for a vetiver fragrance. This one is extremely unique because this actually has four different styles of vetiver. You get Java vetiver in here, there's bourbon vetiver, Haitian vetiver, and then they're just calling it like a generic uh, vetiver note. You actually get a little bit of bergamot in here and neroli, and then a little bit of tonka bean as well. So this one definitely focuses around all these different aspects of vetiver. You do get like the grassiness, the woodiness, you get a little bit of that earthiness in here and even a little bit of kind of that freshness and that like bright citrusy component that vetiver can have sometimes. Of course, working with that bergamot, that definitely helps. The neroli in here brings a very small touch of soapiness. It's not super prominent, but you can definitely pick up on it if you look for it. And the tonka beans bring a very nice touch of sweetness, which really supports this fragrance overall because it is fairly dry. Again, being a vetiver fragrance, it's gonna kind of have that drier aspect to it. But if you're looking for something that is vetiver just to the max, but super, super appealing. You need to check this one out. Again, this is one that made me a vetiver lover. So again, from the house of Nishane, this is arguably my favorite fragrance from the house, and this is definitely my favorite vetiver fragrance out there. This is Sultan Vetiver. Okay, so up next here at the number three spot, we have a very popular fragrance. This thing you see pop up in groups like all day, every day, the Facebook groups, lots of people talk about this. And for good reason, you know, this thing smells fantastic. This was actually the first niche fragrance that I ever smelled and this stuff blew me away. I tried it at Nordstrom. I actually was able to try it on my skin and it smelled so good that I had to go back later that day and reapply just to kind of get that fresh opening again. This stuff is amazing. I picked up a bottle the next day so this is coming from the house of Parfums de Marly, and this is Leighton, which like I said, you guys know about this. Wow, this is aromatic, fruity, spicy, sweet. This is a very unique DNA as well. I think nowadays people probably would not say that as much, but you gotta remember when this thing came out, there was nothing else out there that smelled like it. This definitely manipulates fruity notes to work in kind of a like resinous, almost sweet way because you do get the apple in here, but it does come across very dark. You do get a nice lavender, although it's not overly fresh. It brings more of like a powdery aromatic quality. It's working with, again, with that cardamom and that vanilla, giving you almost an edible vibe to this. This stuff is so tasty smelling, almost like a gourmand, but it doesn't quite go in that territory. Again, this thing is sweet, fruity, aromatic, spicy, very seductive. One of my favorite fragrances just to smell. I do prefer the exclusive version, but this stuff is still fantastic. And again, this is one that blew me away and it made me buy a bottle the following day. Hey, that rhymed by the way, did not mean to do that on purpose. Nonetheless, definitely check this out if you guys have not had the opportunity to do it yet. Again, from the House of Parfums to Marley, this was Leighton. Up next here at the number two spot, we have one of the best grapefruit fragrances out there. Not only that, this stuff is beast mode, which for a citrus fragrance, that is pretty amazing. So this is coming from the house of Bulgari, and this is Tigar, which you guys have seen in lots of my videos. Man, this stuff is fantastic. I tried this at a friend's house and I knew I needed a bottle. This was absolutely the standout fragrance that I tried that night. And I think we probably went through 20 different samples. This stuff really jumped out at me, captivated me. It only has three listed notes, which are grapefruit, woody notes, and then ambroxan. I do have a feeling or like a hunch that there are more notes in here than that. This, this does give off a lot more layers to me than just those three notes, but that's all they're really giving us. You can definitely get the grapefruit here. It is very, very sweet actually, not overly sweet. You can still wear this in the heat, but it is definitely a prominently sweet grapefruit. I think maybe some of that is coming from the Ambroxan here, which is giving off a very fresh vibe. You do kind of get this woody aspect here as well, but this is mostly to my nose about the grapefruit and the Ambroxan. Again, this stuff lasts all day and then some for a fresh fragrance that is pretty amazing. If you have not had the opportunity to even just smell this stuff yet, you need to. This is one of the most appealing fragrances out there. Like I could not imagine anybody disliking this stuff. It is fantastic. Even if you can try a clone, definitely go for it. I haven't tried any personally, but I've heard a lot of them are pretty good. In general, this DNA right here is amazing. Definitely check it out if you can. Again, this stuff really blew me away when I first tried it. So again, coming from the house of Bulgari, this is Tigar. 
Okay, so finally here at the number one spot, I'm just gonna say right now, this is a Tom Ford fragrance. This was one of the first Tom Fords that I ever tried. This was a really good one for me to check out at the beginning of my like fragrance journey, especially into this house, because this stuff is fantastic. There is nothing else out there that smells like this. Even to this day, this stuff really kind of stands alone. The performance is a little bit lackluster, but the scent alone is amazing. This is coming from the house again of Tom Ford. We are talking about the original Oud Wood, which I did you know, talk about this, of course, in a video recently where I ranked my entire Tom Ford collection. Nowadays, this stuff is pretty good to me. It's not my favorite. I think I put this at like number eight out of my 15 fragrance collection. But at the time, you know, this stuff absolutely just blew me away. It still is really good, but again, not trying as much stuff then. This was really unique for me. Never smelled anything like it. It is an awesome fresh oud fragrance, which that's pretty hard to do. I do find this one to be uh, quite fresh. It features cardamom, again oud, but there's also rosewood in here with a bunch of other woody notes. To me, it is spicy, but it's definitely a fresh spice coming from the cardamom. It's not super heavy and dense. The oud here, uh, I don't really think you can honestly pass it off as oud. There is kind of a dark woody feeling to this, but it does not strike me as oud. I'm definitely getting more of the rosewood here. Again, very fresh fresh, woody, spicy. This stuff is signature scent worthy. I think you can do just about everything with this except for wear it to the gym. That's how good this stuff is. If you have not had the opportunity to try this one, I don't know what you're doing. This stuff is popular for a reason. Go try it at a Nordstrom if you can or just get a decant or something. Check it out, you need to try this stuff. So again, from the house of Tom Ford, one of my first entries into the house, this is Oud Wood. Well, there you guys go. That was 10 fragrances that absolutely blew me away when I first tried them. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below what were some fragrances that when you guys first experienced them, they just amazed you, they captivated you, you knew you needed a full bottle, assuming that it was not a blind buy. Overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys did, I would really appreciate dropping a like just to show your support, and then that way more people can see my videos on YouTube. Additionally, if you want to write a comment, maybe just let me know your thoughts, as well as some new video ideas or topics, that would be great too. And since you're down there doing all that stuff, if you have not already, if you could hit the subscribe button and then the bell notification, that would be amazing. That way you stay up to date on new videos whenever they get released going forward. But with all that out of the way, that's all I really have for you guys today. So I hope you have a good one. Stay healthy, stay wealthy, and smell great.